and they broke bread. They ate together. They ate noodles. They ate noodles. noodles. Yes. <laughs> and I think they had roast duck. But they talked about this new religion, this new thing called Christianity. This new thing called the gospel. Mm -hmm. They went house to house talking about the gospel. Mm -hmm. The gospel of Jesus Christ. And they kept encouraging one another, it says. Mm -hmm. Talking about the gospel. I think that's kind of what we're doing here today. As we're talking about fresh new revelation that God is giving to his people. And so we're meeting house to house talking about fresh things that make our hearts come alive. So it's a wild, wonderful uh, story and adventure. So today we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, first of all, the little boy and the eagle. Did you like that? Yes. Did you get the symbolism? Mm. So the little boy is you and me, mm. and the eagle is God. Now God in heaven has never been roped down except the God that we make him in our minds we make him to be really small. So we're the ones who put ropes on him so that he can't be effective to help us. Our unbelief makes him small. So the little boy is learning he could set God free in his mind. God got bigger. And in the process, the little boy gets knocked off of the cliff. But guess what? Here comes God down to pick him up. And then the little boy and God, you and me, we learn about God's heart. That he's kind. He's good. He's powerful. And he wants to be a pungo. Take on the little boy. <laughs> and we try to talk like him. The eagle goes, Rah! and the little boy goes, Rah! <laughs> we try to talk like God. We try to act like God. And he likes that. Because the truth is, we were made in his likeness and his image. That's one of my favorite parts is the reflection in his eye. Mm. Made in his image. Yes. He looked in the eye. There I am. Mm. In God's eye. The Bible says we are the apple of God's eye. Okay, so then God says, I'm going to teach you how to do this flying in the spirit stuff. Living in the heavenly stuff. I'm going to teach you how to do that. We'll go down on the earth. And we'll do some stuff down there. And then we'll come up through the heavens and we'll learn how to soar. Mm -hmm. And eventually, at the very end, God takes you and me to his nest, to his home, up on the high mountain. You get the story? That's kind of a little bit what we want to talk about today. Our destiny... The dream of God for you and me is for us to live with him eternally, not just after our ticker stops, or not just after our heart stops and we die and go to the ground, but right now he wants us to learn how to live with him in heavenly places. Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, Chapter 2, verse 6 says, For we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Remember that verse? Mm -hmm. So the Bible says we're already in heavenly places, but very few people help us to understand how that works or what it feels like or what we could do if we really lived in the heavenlies. So we're gonna talk about that, okay? 
Let me talk about uh, one more verse. Do you guys know Bill Johnson? Bill Johnson, okay. He says this, this is a quote from last October in one of his sermons. He quoted John 3, 13. John 3, 13 is Jesus speaking. He's speaking to Nicodemus. And Jesus said to Nicodemus, who is he who ascended, but he who descended, that is, the Son of Man, me. And listen, who is in heaven. Jesus is telling Nicodemus that early in his ministry, Jesus had learned to ascend and be with his Father. He told Nicodemus, even though I'm talking to you eyeball to eyeball, toe to toe, Kevin, talking to you right here, even though I'm talking like this, Jesus says, I am in heaven, Kevin. Yeah, Gavin. Gavin? Yeah. Okay. Gavin, I am in heaven. Jesus, how could you be in heaven? I see you right here. Jesus says, we live in two realities. We have two realities happening right now at the same time. One of them is this, where we see each other, we eat noodles and roast duck together. That's one reality. The other reality is our spiritual part of our being, our spirit man. Now, we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. But let me finish what Bill Johnson said. He said, after he quoted this verse, he said, some people call this the ascended life. Okay, that's good. His next sentence, Bill Johnson's next sentence is, it is my desire that in the next two years, we here at Bethel would learn how to understand and practice the ascended life. He says one more thing. He said, it is my understanding that if we only live on earth, trying to speak to God up there, instead of living in our heavenly places and speaking down over the earthly situations in our life, that is the difference between us being servants on earth or sons in the heavenly places. Which would you rather be, a servant or a son? A son, right? I want to be a son. Jesus actually said at one point, I don't want to call you servants anymore. I want to call you pangyo, friends. Jesus says, I want you to be my friends because I see you as my sons. Actually, we are brothers to Jesus, sons of our Heavenly Father. Okay. Well, let's see. It's David, right? Yeah. And Mary? Mary. Okay, are you married? Okay. Um, we're, if you don't mind, we're going to do a little, uh, a little demonstration. And Joseph, do you want to participate in this demonstration? Yes. Yes, Joseph yeah. does. Yes, <laughs> raise your hand real high, Joseph. Yes. <laughs> Joseph volunteered for this, okay, guys? <laughs> Joseph volunteered. Okay. Come on up, Joseph. Yeah, right here. Uh, not yet, not yet. And David and Mary, would you mind coming up? Do you mind? Is that okay? Okay. So, Joseph, you stand right there. Stand here. Yeah, that's good. Come on up. And Mary, well, wouldn't you know it? The Bible says in Book of Revelation that the Lamb, capital L, the Lamb, 
was slain from before the foundations of the world. Remember where earth started right here? This is before. So God, Father God, saw all of this and he said, we got a problem. Jesus, would you like to fix the problem? Now Jesus looks down at his bride. He says, oh yeah, you're right. I can, I'm the man for the job. And so he says, yes, I will be the lamb who was slain for them. So you see, Jesus was slain from before the beginning. Mm -hmm. That was the plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Jesus comes in, uh, I'm sorry, uh, mankind is made, and we go down through time, and Jesus comes into the world. He's sent down from the Father above, and he becomes a, became a little baby called Jesus or Emmanuel, God with us. Yes, God showed up with us. He's one of us. But he never sins. And he said, the reason I did this is to become the best, superior, the supreme sacrifice so that I could take all the sins of my bride, all of our sins, upon himself, Jesus said, I'm going to become sin so that you don't have to reap the consequences of sin. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Another verse says, for the wages of sin is death. Jesus says, no, no, I don't want my bride to have to die. I don't want my bride to have to go to hell. So Jesus steps into the picture because remember, it was planned way back here. Remember the plan? Mm -hmm. Now Jesus is in the picture and uh, we murder him. <laughs> we put him on a cross and there he is. He dies. Blood comes out of his side and he receives stripes in order to, uh, for our healing. He takes on all of our sin. The Bible says he became sin, became sin for you and I. Okay, thank you, Jesus, you did good. You did really good. Now, here comes you and me. Come up here just a little bit right here. Now we're like, we're just bebopping through life, just kind of doing our thing. And then we run into a few problems, and we, we sin. We make trouble for ourselves. And we realize we need help. I need help. I'm a weak, fallen human being, and I need a God. And we look to God, and we say, God, where are you? And God says, look to my son. Look to my son. Look over here. He's the one who's the perfect example and the perfect sacrifice. Look to him. He's the one who can save you. Okay. Listen to the birds. <laughs> Good job. Look to him. He's the one that can save you. Jesus said, Jesus said, if you've seen me, You've seen the Father, because I came to represent or reveal the Father. Are you tracking with me so far? Okay? Okay. So we say, wow, Jesus, I, I like what you did. You came and walked among us, and you healed us, and you did miracles, and uh, you did miracles, and then you died for us. You shed your blood for us. I think I like that. I think I could trust you. Okay, Jesus, what do I need to do? Well, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's John 3.16, right? Mm -hmm. 
Jesus, is that all I have to do is just believe in you and receive you as my Savior? Jesus says, yes. It's simple. Just believe that I came from God in order to pay your price so you could be one with me and God. We say, okay, Jesus, I believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we come on over and and Jesus puts his arm around us over here. Jesus puts his arm around us and he brings us into, and the Bible says, we become his bride. Okay? Is that pretty good? You got the story so far? Mm -hmm. Well, the story doesn't stop here, but now we need three chairs. Father God, would you help me get three chairs? We'll put Father God to work. (laughs) <laughs> Father God had been way too taking it easy. He'd been taking it easy. Yeah. Mark, would you move that way a little bit so people mm-hmm. can look at the translation? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Okay, Father God, you sit there. Now, uh, Jesus, you come over here. Over here. Jesus. 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 (laughs) Come over here. Right in here. Good job. Now, look. um, Over here, and you look that way. You look. Come here. Come here. And then you. Good job. Okay. So the Bible says that after Jesus was crucified and then raised, it says he was raised and seated at the right hand of the Father. Is that right? Is that what the Bible says? Okay, Jesus, after your crucifixion, after you did your job on the work on the on the world, then where did you go? You were seated at the right hand of the Father. Okay. Good job. Wow. There's Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father. Now that's pretty good stuff. I mean, Jesus is sitting at Father God's right hand like, wow, way up there in heaven. The Bible says that Jesus was seated far above all principalities and powers and rule. Way, 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 way up there, okay? That's where Jesus is seated right now. Is that good for Jesus? He's the Son of God? Yes, that's good for Jesus. Yes. Good job, Jesus. Good job, Father God. You guys really are, you rock, man. You really rock, okay? (laughs) Right, Rocky? (laughs) (laughs) But now here's where you're going to have to believe the Bible more than our feelings. The Bible says in Colossians 3, verse 1, it says, since you were raised, since you and I were raised. Are you a believer? Are you a Christian? Did you give your heart to Jesus? Yes. Yes. Okay. At the moment you gave your heart to Jesus, the Bible says you became a new creation. You're not just a human being that looks a little better. You're a new species. You're a different animal now. You're a different person. Okay? You're not a human anymore. You are a human, but you're something more than a human. Okay? So the Bible says, since you were raised, that's Colossians 3 verse 1. And so where were you raised to? Huh? Ephesians 2, 6 says you were now seated with Christ in heavenly places. You, Gavin and uh, Crystal, you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. So Mary, if you don't mind, since you are representative of all of us, You represent us. You get it? Okay. 
then since you were raised and now you're seated with Christ in heavenly places, why don't you go ahead and take your seat? Next to Jesus. Right next to Jesus. So here's Father God, and Jesus is seated at the Father's right hand. Where's your right hand, Father? That's right. Okay, good job. So Jesus is on the right side, right? And you and I are seated with Christ there in heavenly places. And this is far above all principalities and powers and rule. That's what the Bible says. Do you believe the Bible? Yes. Or do you just believe your feelings? <laughs> you got it. Good job. We're going to believe the Bible more than our feelings and more than our experiences. Because the Bible's true. The Bible's everlasting. My experiences and my feelings are pretty short. Don't last very long. So I want to put my belief in the Bible. Got it? So here we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. So you really are in heaven. We have two realities. One is our flesh and blood, our earthliness, our humanness. That's one reality. And this is our other reality. You with me? This is our other reality. Now, how familiar are you with this reality? Do you spend much time here? Do you think about this very much? Do you have experiences in this reality? So most people don't. Because why? They haven't been taught. It's scriptural. It's in our Bibles. It's very, very common verses that everybody knows, but nobody teaches us how to live here. Almost nobody. So what we want to do is get familiar with living here as much as we've been familiar with living on the earth. So that you could live in both places at the same time time. Remember what Jesus said in John 3? Remember I said earlier, Jesus said, he was talking to Nicodemus, he said, I am in heaven. He was talking about this right here. He was talking about living in heavenly places with his father. So he did, he did have a body and he could talk, and he could eat, and he could sleep, and he could walk. He had a body, but his spirit man was seated in heaven, and he learned how to live there. He learned how to let this be the greater reality, the bigger reality for his existence and for his life. Okay? Now, it's going to get just a little bit better. Oh, okay, so is this pretty good? You like this? Yes. Yeah. Listen to this. On your worst day, when you sin really big, oh, big, bad sin, on your worst day, this is still real. This is more real than your sin. Did you sin? Yes, but this is more real. This has to be what we see, think, move, dream, speak. This has to be a reality. You said, you said, you believed in the Bible. <laughs> you said the Bible was more true than your feelings and your experiences. And that is true. I believe the Bible too. I want this to be greater, bigger, than any sin I've ever sinned. Because Jesus said, once you've given your heart to him, you sit right here. Okay, let me quote one more verse. This is Colossians 3, verse 3. 
So, this is pretty good, right? But it gets better. Okay? How could it get better? This is so good. How could it get better? You're seated right here with God, right? Okay, watch this. Father God, sit back in your chair. <laughs> Jesus, we need you to get up. Come here. And I want you to sit on Jesus. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Now, this is Mary, but she's she's us. Mm -hmm. Mary's me. Yeah. Mary's you, okay? Mm -hmm. So Mary, would you get up? And you sit on Jesus' lap. Uh-huh. <laughs> there you go. Good job. Now, Father God, you put your arms around right here. This is Colossians 3, verse 3. It says, for you have died, and your life, your life, is now hidden with Christ inside of God. You are hidden with Christ inside of God. Look at this. You and me with Christ inside of God. Is that good? Take a picture. <laughs> okay, thank you. Don't ever, ever forget. Good job, David, Mary. Good job. You're making it. And Father God, you did good too. Father good. Father God, isn't he good? Father God, he, he did so good. He learned all of his lines, and he said his lines perfectly. <laughs> now, if you will not forget that scene, if you'll not forget that picture, it will strengthen you on your weak days. When you are weak, feel powerless, or when you sin, remember this. You said you believe the Bible. Mm. You said this is more real than your feelings. Mm -hmm. I say that too. I agree. So what we want to do is begin to make this <laughs> our default thinking. What is default? means the first thing you think about. On your worst day, on your bad day, when you got a bad hair day. <laughs> I don't have any more bad hair days. I had some back there, but then it just left me. But anyway, on your bad hair days, this is reality. Okay. Now, do we want to hand out that handout? Okay. Uh, that picture, the one yes. on the screen? Uh-huh. Okay. You have a paper? Uh, Joyce has it. Come on, Joyce. You can do it. This yeah, one right the here. Pictures. Oh, the okay. Okie dokie. So we're going to talk about you and me. This is you and me, okay? A little stick guy, all right? Okay, remember I said we have two realities. Two. Somebody answer me, what's the first reality? What's the reality, the one we, everybody knows? Here. Yes, very good. Good job, Gene. Good job, Gene. <laughs> We're here on Earth. What's the other reality? Oh, we have to get to heaven. Yes, good job, Crystal. In heaven. So this is the Earth, okay? This is where circumstances are. Marriage and families children, business and finances, and decisions. So this is where all of that stuff happens. Is this real? Yes. Yes, yeah. this is real. This is just one of... This is just one of two realities. You have two. We've only lived in this one most of the time. This is the one that we live in almost all of life, because why? That's all we've ever known. Almost nobody talks about this one. 
except in sermons, but they don't tell us how. They don't tell us how to live up here. Okay, so remember I said Colossians 3, 1, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 says, when you got saved, you were raised. To where? Remember Father, Jesus, and you? Remember the three chairs? Yes. There's Father and Jesus and you. You're seated with Christ in heavenly places. You really are. You are not just a human. You are also a son of God seated in heaven. So what we want to do is get familiar, learn how to live in this place. So what happens if we live there? First of all, our feet are on the ground, on this earth. We drive a car and we pay our bills and stuff like that, right? But up here is where our spirit man, our, our heart, is now seated here. The Bible says if we'll spend time here, we will get the mind of Christ. If we spend time with them, we'll get the mind of Christ. Our mind will be renewed. That's a Bible verse. Uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you get a new mind. Now, remember I said Bill Johnson's, remember when I quoted Bill Johnson a while ago? Mm -hmm. He said, if you only live here trying to talk to God way up there, that's like a servant. You're just only a servant. Mm -hmm. Now, you're still saved. You're still a Christian. You're still going to heaven. No problem. Mayo and tea. But, Bill Johnson said, if we learn to live up here while we're walking down here, he says, that's what sons do. Sons of God. They learn to live here and rule over the earthly situations. Now, if, if we only live down here, if this is who we are, little stick man down, boom, 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 little stick man, and I'm talking to God, way up there, oh, you're way up there, God, I don't know where you are, that's a long ways away. Usually my prayers and my conversation with God is like a beggar, a beggar. Big God, little me. Big God, little me. Okay? So, I don't know, God, can you help me, please? I, I, you're a long ways away. You're up in that galaxy, long, far away out there in the heavens. Can you hear me up there? I need you to help me. You get the point? Have we ever prayed any prayers like that? I have. I don't want to pray those anymore. No more. I want to believe the Bible more than my feelings. I want this to become my reality because this is Scripture. This is Bible. I want to find myself seated with Christ in heavenly places. I want to find myself having the mind of Christ. Oh, and I'm hidden with Christ in God. Ooh, look at that. Good job. I want to find that when I, when I get the mind of Christ, when I get Christ's mind, then I can begin to speak down over the earth. See, what can I do? Instead of praying beggar prayers, I pray decrees, prophesy, 
declare and release. I begin to speak down into my situations. I begin to rule over them rather than my problems being over me. Oh no, God, I'm overwhelmed with trouble. Instead of my troubles being over me, I want to be up here and rule from the heavenlies over my troubles. And how do I do that? I get the mind of Christ, and then I begin to speak into them. I prophesy over them. Now, if you and I are seated in heaven and standing on earth at the same time, then you shouldn't have any trouble getting there. The problem is our belief system. Our belief system between our ears. Our belief system hasn't been upgraded. Do you ever get an upgrade on your phone? Yes or no? Yes. Do you guys still have flip phones? <laughs> <laughs> do you have smartphones? Yes. yes, we all do. You get upgrades. And do your apps ever get upgraded? Yes. Does your laptop ever get upgraded? Yes. yes. So if that's true, then it is true, so we understand how that works. God also wants to give our mind an upgrade. How do we get an upgrade? We go to his word, the scripture. And we find out, like, oh my goodness, OMG. You get it? This is truly an oh my God. Is it really true that I'm seated with you? He says, yes, it's more true than you realize. It's more true than anybody has ever told you. He says, it's abundantly above all you could ask or even imagine. This is true. He says, it will blow your circuits. Do you know that word, that phrase? It'll blow your fuse. <laughs> it'll, it'll be stunning. Stunning. <laughs> it'll stun you when you realize how powerful this is. You say, oh, why did I ever live so low before? Why did I live so far away from God? I believed in God. I was a Christian, but he was like the little cartoon boy. God had been roped down. Remember the cartoon? Remember? And the, the eagle was roped down. God, in my mind, was roped down to a little bitty concept. And God is giving us understanding. He's giving us revelation that's helping us to understand he's big, and not only is he big, he's good. And not only is he good, he says, I want you to be here with me. Because that's where I see you right now. He says, come on, let's do it. You're already here in spirit. Now, begin to practice it in your mind and in your experiences. Okay. Um, let me see. Let me just quote one more verse. And this is uh, Matthew 18, 18. Right here it says... It says, whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. That's Matthew 18, 18. Well, stuff happens down here on earth. Problems, decisions, you know, we got to make decisions because circumstances happen. Stuff happens. How am I going to rule over that? Well, since I'm up here, the Bible says, whatever you loose on earth, listen to me here just a second, whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. By who? You and me. You see, 
we spent time with Jesus to get his mind. And you got the mind of Christ, right? And now we speak his mind. We speak what he says. Down over all of the things in our life. So we begin to rule. So now the trouble is not over me. Now I'm over top of the trouble. Okay. Shereen, I think I presented that idea. Should we have some questions or comments?